I'd like to welcome you all to this webinar today. It's on masonry design and how Master Series can allow you to design masonry walls and panels efficiently and rapidly. So save time, save money. That's the only two reasons for buying software. What I'd like to do is first of all put you in the pictures to where this sits in the whole suite and I'm just going to click on this little PowerPoint presentation for a second. So we have analysis of frames, portals and beams. Not interested today. We have wind analysis, beam integration, fine elements and dynamic and seismic analysis. So all the big frame stuff. Onto those we can also do our steel or concrete, composite, connection and timber design. What we're interested in today is one of our standalone modules. A module you can buy on its own with nothing else. So this is the one we're interested in, masonry design. So I'm just going to press escape and come out of that. So one little product. As I say, it can be bought on its own without any additional software. Let us start. Master Series 2019. And I can see I'm using the 26th of November version. And since I'm on a big network, I'm going to log into both the PowerPan and Master Series. So here we go, our little analysis engines, our little standalone modules, and our little simple beam designers. We're interested in masonry. And we can go and open a masonry file, or I can just say, here we are, I want to look at this masonry file that I did previously. And this is the sort of things we're going to get to. But I'm going to start at the very beginning. And I'm going to start off with a basic wall with a 0.75 kilonewton per meter square load on it. And it's giving us a 92% unity utilization of that wall. So it's got moment capacity is at 92%. I will first of all check what are my codes. I am using Euro code. I'm using the UK National Annex. I have all the other European annexes built in for this Euro code. We can also do the old Irish code plus the British standards as well. So we can flick between codes of practice. And interestingly, if I was to go back to the BS on this, you'd see that I am 2% uh, more rigorous and getting a 2% reduction in unity. But I'm just going to trot back to my Euro code and off I come 90.2, 91.9. So, how do we set it out? Let's look at our wall. And we've got our wall dimensions, 6 by 3.5. Those are reduction factors you can use. Um, nobody uses them, but they are available for uh, effective length and width classification as according to the codes. But I never get involved in those. As we can see, it is pinned all round. And we just click on one of these to make it fully fixed. And now we get a different yield line pattern. And notice the way the yield lines not only give you the hugging, which is the green, but you also find it more efficient to go across the toe there rather than into the corner as you would have done with a hand calculation or the simplified formulas. This is a more accurate visualization of the yield lines. And you can see by making that fixed, then you um, are good to go. Obviously, a fixed base is something you would need to think about. If this was second, third floor, maybe that's fine. But if this was a ground floor and you were dealing with a DPC, most DPCs should be really classified as a pinned base or foundation. So they would normally be classified as pinned. If we just classify one side as continuous, so we just click on the side here, and up it comes, and we can see it's not as strong as it was when we put the bases fixed, because A, it's a different length, and B, it's the orthogonal ratio of the units means that it's got a different strength capacity. So we're still down to 81%. Now, the next thing we can do to this sort of wall 
is very simple. We could turn around and say, well, you know, the two leaves are different. I have a break on my inner leaf and my outer leaf is continuous. Well, what you can do is you can go and say that the outer leaf is continuous on both sides. The inner leaf is pinned on both sides and do that. But you actually don't need to. Both the BS and the Euro codes say that if one of the two leaves is continuous, sorry, if the continuous leaf is the thicker or equal thickness, then you consider both to be fixed. And the reasoning behind that is that one can't curve without the other curving in Fletcher because of the ties and proximity of the two. So they actually the fixed leaf will pull the pinned leaf into making a ghost hinge anyway. So it's available, but not usually necessary. Usually we can work with this one layout. Okay, so we're at 80%. But what happens if I turn around and say, well, I'm not in inner London on the ground, but I am up in the highlands and I have a internal suction that gives me a total wind load of 1.2. Let's look at this. We have our wind load, 1.25 kilonewtons. We can use a non-critical situation where if you watch it, we're using 27 as my, or 2.7 as my gamma M here. If I change this, it suddenly changes this gamma M to 2.4. So a 0.3 of a reduction because it's non-critical. If it falls down, it is not stabilizing any other uh, members. So it's not critical from that point of view. Having said that, if somebody's sheltering in behind it, I think it might be critical to them. So we'll take off that non-critical and push the factor back up. So we're now at 1.35 factor. We're failing alarm bells and we're working to EN 1996. So let us go and look at how we can strengthen this wall. We can't change our edges because those are what they are. Uh, we can look at materials. So let's look, I always like to look at the outer leaf material. At the minute we're using high absorption clay bricks. I am going to go for medium absorption, a quick recalculation, and we've reduced from point. 1.3 to 1.2, so that's an improvement. Could we argue that we're actually going to have very high quality clay bricks? And the answer to that is possibly yes. And that will bring us down to only 9% overstressing. Let's look at the strength of the, bl of the bricks. And you and I know that in clay, it doesn't really give us much, if anything, in Fletcher. It's giving us a wee bit of an increased Fletcheral strength. But if we go on up above 15 it's not giving us any more. So the 10 Newton block is, for Fletcher, the strongest of the clay bricks. We could again change our classes. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep to the basics. Uh, that's the outer leaf. Now let's look at the inner leaf material. Concrete blocks. And I'm going to say, no, no, we're not going to go for 7s. We're going to go for 10.4s. And that should be enough to make this wall nearly work. We're nearly there. If it was non-critical, it would work. Could I get away with higher? Let's try the 17 Newton blocks. And I think if I remember correctly, 17 again is that crossover point above 17. We get no benefit. If I was to go up to 30, you should see this figure here not changing because again there's no fletcheral increase only axial so 17 and a half is the sweet spot on those bricks and blocks so it works it works by 1.5 percent but because we're using an advanced yield line analysis we need to be careful if we look at our yield line analysis we're using a coarse mesh if I turn around and say, let's go for a medium mesh, it's going to recalculate and it's going to take about three or four seconds. Five, six. So it's actually made it slightly worse because there's always a finite difference in this. And we can see that we're very close to failing. So if I went to fine or super fine, I would expect that I would actually end up 
ever so slightly failing. But it's like a exponential asymptotic curve. It's actually virtually no change. So as long as you're above, below 0.95, you normally are never going to converge out of it. As you can see for the fine, this is going to take maybe 30, 40 seconds to do its um, analysis. And one of the reasons we don't go to the fine or super fine at the start is because even on a big i7 processing computer, it does take a lot of resources um, to work out all the different permutations of U lines and to then choose the weakest. So we can see at the super fine, we've gone to just over 1% work failure. And you could argue, Meh, maybe that's going to work. It'll probably be okay. Now, this is where you could turn around and you could say, well, actually, let's stiffen one of these two surfaces and make it work. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to jump back to medium and I'm going to look at my wall again. Uh, inner material, outer material. Um, I can't really change those. The only thing I can change here is the thickness. And I'm going to change from 100 to 100. And it's just doing a recalc there. We don't really get 101. 140 new, uh, mil block inner leaf. And that's going to work, hopefully. And there we go. It's well in as you expect. Now, instead of doing that, let's go back to the 100. You and I know that, particularly in a cavity wall like this, they never l work on their own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the inner leaf and I'm going to apply some load onto the top of that wall. And I'm going to apply a concentric and an eccentric load. So it's a two-story or thereabouts. So I'm going to say at this floor level, we have five and five. And I'm going to have a wall of, say, 18 coming down dead and also a bit of live and this should give us a slight enhancement to make possibly the wall work so we're now down with the additional loading on that wall from the point loads external and internal um, giving us a wall that now works due to the improvement in the um, flexural strength, there we go, the GD 0.25 FK MU over ML, gamma MF. So that's our flexural strength improved uh, due to the axial compression that is benefiting us. So we're still at the basics of our analysis. Of course, the next thing you want to do, think about is there's quite a lot of walls that don't ha that have openings in them, so let's go and put an opening in this wall. And I'm going to introduce two openings. And I can see that this works not. It's not working at 1.7. So initially, my reaction might be to come along and say, well, let's make it fixed on both sides. And we're at 1% overstressed and then maybe argue that we're fixed on the top because it's continuous to two leaves, it's continuous up. So let's make this work. And we're now 82%, but we've got a blueness here. And what's the problem? We've got a local flexural strength problem that is not happy. So we need to think about thickening this wall because of the openings. If I was to go and do this using the old method, of analysis where you have subframes you get horrendous failures the old method in the code of practice says without more rigorous u-line analysis you divide your panels up into vertically spanning and horizontally spanning sub panels you can see now we're at 2.2 overstressing not advisable let's go and work for our yield line so we want to possibly increase this a wee bit and the way to increase the strength of this rather than thickening it or putting a pier in is to come along and introduce bed reinforcement 
So, bit of bed reinforcement. And here we go. And strangely, I'm actually getting, and I was playing with this earlier and I was getting it to work and I'm not certain why or what I've done to make this on happy. That's your flexural strength, that's your... Ah, it's the buckling force due to the excessive compressive load. Uh, it's now taking these compressive loads down into these wee strips and saying, oh, no, 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 not happy. So in this case, you probably would need, no matter what you did, to go up to a 140 wall. We're going to recalculate. And there we go. A 140 wall is working. Would we ne even need the bed reinforcement? Let's try it without bed reinforcement. And in my case, yes, it is. So it was the high axial loads that I was applying onto these this wall that was on the openings close together that was causing us to have grief that we couldn't make it work otherwise without the heavier wall. So as one of your benefits is that we can do these configure, conf easily or configured walls. If we want to add a third opening in, we could put a third opening and let's just say, let's put it at 1.5 along and we're going to make it um, one, whoops, sorry, 1 1.5 high. We're going to start it at 2.5 up, 2.5, and we're going to make it a, sh a narrow 200, 500 slit, 0.5. Move away, and hopefully I end up, there we go, with an additional opening in there. And again, it's a readjust at the yield lines. And showing you that it will work if I was to come down and use one of those very expensive 215 or 125 walls, which I've seen available uh, from some of the manufacturers. It also would work, but as you saw earlier, in fact, with the reinforcement, we are actually now and it's channeling the axial loads coming down through different uh, areas. It's now actually now working and it's not actually overstressing this because it's getting support. So we have all these flexibilities in the program to allow you to um, cater for most problems. If I was to come along and say, no, 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 uh, I don't want bed reinforcement. Um, I want to put in a wall that has a point load here then we can come back to the inner leaf loading and we're able to put in a concentric point load onto the wall so there we go we've now got our point load on that wall so we've got a point load coming down on top of our opening here not very clever whatsoever and we come along and we look at our results and the problem is no bearing enhancement. It's just not happy. In fact, it's not happy at all because it is so close down below. If I was to put a spreader beam underneath, underneath that and say that it is the depth is 215 and the width is 450. I suspect it will probably still be annoyed because it's coming down on the top of that um, beam and it's just saying no you can't really have that there. So let's move this out of the way of the opening or let's move the opening out of the way of the axial load. It doesn't matter which we do. I'm going to easily change this from minute 2 meters to 3.5. And the axial load here now it moves over here and it gets a decent spread through um, does it actually even need a pad stone let's find out by putting one of these two values to zero 
and we will see in fact with the 100 by 100 mil bearing of that we don't need a pad stone it is actually all deemed to work perfectly adequately um, very well in fact so uh, that's quite a complicated arrangement and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to think about introducing um, some additional loading. So let's take off our heavy point loads. Let's take off our lateral um, vertical axial loads. Let's take off that loading altogether. So it's and let's take off some of the edge supports. Let's get back to a wall that is normally pinned on the sides. So we're going to pin it on the two sides and the top. I'll explain what these mean in a minute. Why we actually have more than just two settings here. It can get quite interesting. So there we go. A simply support it on all four sides and it doesn't work with these openings in it and the yield line is running to there and there and there. So it's actually quite a simple yield line pattern. If I went and asked it to go for fine, you might find that it actually comes up with a slightly more complex U line pattern with additional sub lines where it's cracking in different areas. And there we go, we get a slight variation of this where some comes to the corner, as you'd expect. And again, notice that it's quicker for it to bear across here than in here. It's weaker than taking these into the corner, as you would have done. So I'm just going to go back to the medium because it's just quicker for me to do. And you can see this is a more coarse and just puts it into the corner. So it's wor not working. And... Going back to my reinforcement, bed reinforcement is a very useful tool. And up until this year, we only had areas of reinforcement. So with inner reinforcement only, 3 mil bars at 60 apart every 225. If I tried 5 mil bars, we will see that we're up to just about not working. Or just about working. So we're in that twilight zone where we really should go for a finer resolution and find that it fails just ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go to my library and I have in here, it's actually just doing its calculations, a full remit of different materials. So I have the Beckhart's Muir 4 Compact, that lovely new ultra high yield stuff that's on a roll and comes 30 meters in length and can be cut. You also have the old Brick Force, the Ancon, the Expand Met, and the ASC Apollo. Uh, so if you go to one of the Ancon arm types, you can then choose your dimension bar sizes. So you can see you have anything all the way up to 5 mil at 150. So we wouldn't go above 60 mil, 5 mil, uh, because that's going to give you 20 cover each each side, and that is still not quite working. Uh, it's in one percent, but what I'm going to do is go back to the Beckhart, and I'm going to put some bed reinforcement on the inner leaf, or outer leaf as well. And in fact, that's the wrong type. That's the, the special. That's the internal I want to use. So the internal. Fifty. And then I'm going to come along and put in bed reinforcement on the outer leaf. But this time it needs to be either galvanized or stainless steel so I'm going to choose Muir 4 blue which is their galvanized um, steel and that's still giving us a slight problem so 
it's not necessarily the solution to everything. And I'm going to turn around and put these in at 100 centers inside and outside. And um, we will see that we're down to 4% overstressing and put that into inside. Again, we could go and turn on the not critical and get another 5 or 10% reserve on our design. So we're just about working. If I come back to my lateral loads and say non critical, you would find that it would probably work. There we go, it's just about brought it down a wee bit, but not that much in my case. So um, in this case, we would probably either go up for a thicker wall or we would consider a pier. And the ideal position for a pier is either here to try and cut down the length or if we move this opening over to one side a wee bit, we could put the pier down in here. So I'm going to go... And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off what they call the auto solve. So it just means I can start typing without everything updating every instance. I'm going to go to this opening and say, well, that's fine, but can we have it at 1.25? So ever so slightly over. So now we could drop a pier down the middle. I'm going to go or a wind post. I'm going to go for a wind post and I'm going to make that wind post at... Point seven five. Uh, make it eight five, so it's down in between the two, or eight seven five. If you want to get really pernickety about it, dividing up those, and the section is going to be definitely not a four five seven. I'm going to choose a hollow section. If my brain would actually work, C, S, R, R, rectangular hollow section, and we're going to put in something nice and neat and small, and we're going to put in a hundred by eighty by five. Now it shows it out here just for diagrammatic purposes. We can either put it in the wall, so I'm going to resolve with this. <laughs> Where it's located will not affect things from that point of view. So we're seeing that everything is more or less working, although we do have a problem with, again, with these flexural strengths uh, because of the way things are now working with that window. What we can do is we can turn around and say, well, actually, I want to rotate it through minor. So it's sitting in the flat, and I can then say, well, it'll be in the cavity, 80 mil, giving it a cover away from the outer leaf and attached. But if you were to take it in its major axis, put it in here, split the wall, you could argue that the inner leaf wind post breaks the continuity. So you end up with simply supported here rather than continuous on that inner leaf. And we just resolve and we can see our capacities are a lot stronger and we're bearing onto that um, post. So we now know that that post itself is not failing because we're getting the the yield line coming along parallel to the post and then obviously to here and not coming into the corner. So we're just getting that flexural strength across there. So that would work other than there's a capacity problem that we were pre facing previously due to that um, opening. So I'm actually going to come along and take this opening out and see if that solves the problem. There we go. Yeah, so we're now getting it working perfectly well. Uh, well, the opening's not out, it's just starting at the corner. That's interesting. It's not a problem. We can have openings coming into edges and taken away from that. Uh, that's not a problem, you know, if that's what we need. Uh, we can see now that this all works. Now, I want to just look now at some other little differences. If I go in and I create another wall, add a brief, and we're now in brief 3, if I go to reinforcement and just say I have none, 
if I then go to win posts and say our openings I have none, win posts I have none. Just taking all that rubbish out. What I can do is I can turn around and say, well, actually, what I want is a freestanding wall that is not a cavity. So, freestanding wall is not going to work 100 mil thick. It is miles away. We're at 17 times overstressed in that. So we need to pull this all the way down. Let's go to our wall. Let's make this a 215 wall. Sounds reasonable. And let's make this a 1.8 meter high wall. And we'll see how well it does. We're at 1.6. So you could argue this 1800, because that's quite a, a hefty wind load at 1.25. We could argue uh, definitely at this situation it's non critical, it's not stabilizing anything else. We might even argue a lower uh, wind pressure because it's going to shed over the top of it and things. Um, but I think 1.25 because of the suction and the pressure is probably a reasonable value. So it's failing. Um, at 1.6, we can't really increase this anymore. We could introduce our own um, test results if we wanted to for a special material, but we don't have that. Uh, the only thing we can do is either thicken it, and how thick would I need to go? A uh, 325 would give us a solution. So a 325, a foot thick wall, is going to work. But instead of a, th a foot thick wall, a 325, I would choose to go for a peered wall and I would choose to have peers that are 440 on a 215 and they're every 200 and solve or 2 meters 2.2 .2. and we're just not quite so if I was to reduce that to 1800 6 foot centers we're nearly there so what's our solution? Maybe we increase this one more half brick to 550, analyze, and now that is working. But as you can imagine, it's quite a hefty wall. But freestanding piers are, are walls are, if you want to prove them uh, for reasonable wind pressures. Now, obviously, if we were down south and, or in the middle of Belfast, you would be taking a far lower basic wind pressure, you could be arguing that the lateral load is about 0 0.7, 0 0.75. And at that case, you could turn around and say, well, at 0 0.75, would a 325 peers work? And it's just about going to work. And no more. Um but we would probably want to go for a heavier density. And it won't actually need a finer density to prove anything because it is just a, a freestanding wall with a line across here. So it'll actually solve very, very fast. In that case, it just says, no, it's freestanding. And there's not really a problem. There we go. And it's still giving you the same answer because it's, it's, it's the densities are relevant. But it is working. So that is a op a solution. Now 450 and 325 personally I would probably push that out to 450 and then push this up to 225 and see if that works and that also works as a more interesting wall so I could then say well would I get away with 27 as my wall centers and I can say yes I would get away with them at 2.7 meter centers uh, with these piers in the wall and what about at 315 just about so you can see that you can sculpt and play around with these freestanding walls to decide how frequently and how thick you want your piers now just moving across and adding another brief one of the last things that we're able to do is to get rid of piers 
and to go for a freestanding column. And we're going to get rid of that um, lateral load, and no thank you. And then we're just going to go for the column loading. And we're going to say that we've got a column loads. And we're dealing with our eccentricities in the two different axes. And we're first of all going to say that our column is 215 by 215 and it is 2.4 meters center to center. So 2.4 is the height and we don't need a reduction factor. So 2.4 and you can see we've put some axle loads onto this already and it's all working so you can have concentric and eccentric axle loads onto that wall those aren't two skins that's just the two sides of the wall showing you the eccentricity in each direction so very simply the concentric and the eccentric loads and the two eccentricities so you can play around with your eccentricity saying it's 70 mil in that direction and it's 20 in that direction those are the default values and you can actually know where your bearing is on that and design them even more so would it get away with a hundred in one axis and i'm going to say it is a thickness of a hundred by 215 and of course it doesn't the limiting de dimensions the gamma m's are a wee bit no 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 so we might need at least 140 and the answer to that is we're just about right in capacity but our dimensions are still not happy it does not like anything as skinny as that and now we're happy at the 215 wall so what have we got we've got laterally loaded panels We've got vertically loaded panels. We've got point loads and pad stones. We've got different degrees of fixity on our walls. We've got openings. We've got bed reinforcement. We've got wind posts, multiple wind posts, multiple wind open, uh, openings. If I was to come back to one of my previous walls, I'd mentioned about the fixities. That, as we all know from both the BS and the Euro code, is the symbol for a pinned wall. That is the symbol for a fixed edge. This is something between pinned and fixed. What it means is that it's 30% better than pinned but not fixed. And we can do that quite easily from the formulas in the codes uh, or from, and we can say solve, and you'll see. The variation now in yield line coming through it's a lot smaller because the thickness of the lines re of these blue and green lines represents the degree of rotation the degree of re of applied moment across them so a lot less if I was to come and make that a hundred percent fixed which is actually fixed in the first place you'd see that now it actually understands 100% as being fixed. You'll get a far thicker line down here and a better utilization. And the fact that it's now saying, no, 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 this is the weaker of the two side panels due to the wind post. So you have that facility. We can also go down and say minus 50%. So we've got some sort of support, but it's quite flexible and it's not giving us enough support to be fully pinned but it's not a full cantilever not a full free edge so we can go and again you'll find that this is even smaller contribution it's no contribution whatsoever in fact because it's less than pinned it's nearly free and that brings us to the fourth option a free edge analyze what's the input here for the fr on the free edge that's actually a hang up from the old fashioned sub panel methods where you divided your panels up for openings and that allows you to put a line load along that free edge and is very very useful so I'm just going to go back to pin now while I'm at pin let's look at this opening here 
another degree of flexibility is that's going to be my opening is the defaults to span two directions I could take that and say no no it spans horizontally so it's just been supported here and here all the load from this panel has been supported here and here we can also say there's no load it is actually an opening without a door or a shutter or a window it's just a pure opening and that is sometimes re requested and therefore we can do it so there's no load transferred back when you do that bottom free two-way vertical horizontal bottom free is thinking well we don't have a jam here we've just got these t three edges and they're supporting the wind coming onto the wall so you can stipulate how you want the default being two-way spanning and you can have up to 10 openings and no load or in this case you can say ignore opening loads altogether on all of the panels so there's no load here here or here for whatever reason and you're done the only place I could ever think of for this would be you see it in the movies the army or the FBI or whatever practice uh, ranges where they have buildings where they can shoot out of and there's obviously no doors and windows but no we would always have wind on them what's the difference between the full and the power pad version uh, there's a big difference if I was to come out of the master series and just minimize that go back in again but this time I want to go back in as a power pad only user so power pad only start now and into the same file and what you'll see is suddenly all my pretty openings have disappeared that I had in my first file my first brief my second brief all my openings have disappeared my third brief is the wall standing wall that's fine so what is and what isn't available very simple everything here is is good everything here is good um, inner leaf loading you do not have concentrated point loads so no point loads and their pad stones outer leaf is the similar to what you had previously outer leaf again no point loads not that you ever want to lateral loading is virtually no different and it's the last three wind posts no wind posts openings no openings bed reinforcement no bed reinforcement so it is four things none of these three wind post openings and bed reinforcement and no concentrated point loads so those are the options that are available only in the full version of the masonry as a power pad user who's paid your money for power pad and got a small version of the masonry when you upgrade to the full version of the masonry you get that at a discount uh, coming in on your upgrades so ladies gentlemen uh, everybody I'd like to thank you all for coming along uh, we will get this video pushed out onto the web in the next few days and we will send you a link to it we will also review the questions give some more uh, clarity to some of the questions uh, rather than my normal waffling uh, if you have any more questions just send them in to help at masterseries.com or to myself at sales at masterseries.com if you need a quotation just again sales at master series and if you want to try the software the easiest way to try the software is to go to this master series go to products come down to the pretty picture of a masonry wall and show product once you do that and you're in the master key masonry when you say start your free trial fill in your details in my case Tommy 
blah 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 and it'll automatically select the masonry as being what you want to try and then just next uh, any questions you know give me a price I want five copies yes I understand that it's very important technical software not to be used by somebody doing a house extension themselves and whether you want to enroll in our emailing lists um, and then finish and we will get you the trial emailed to you as a download within five ten minutes I believe is the current time for the system to respond so very simple very straightforward again thank you